Oh my goodness, good morning. Today is a lovely day. My mom brought me a hot vanilla chai from my favorite place in the world, best vanilla chai ever, and the Makeup Forever HD Skin Undetectable Longwear Foundation launched today. I ordered it from Sephora, and oh, I got a PR package in the mail. Literally five minutes after I ordered it, so I'll cancel that order real quick, and... I gotta slap this on my face. That's what I'm gonna say. <laughs> so this foundation is available on the Makeup Forever website and the Sephora website as well. I will have them linked down below if you do choose to order. They are $43 each and this sounds delightful. This is the new and improved version of the Ultra HD foundation and you guys, this has been my holy grail since like 2014, okay? So I'm excited about this. For today's review, I'm just gonna test this foundation all in its glory all over my face. I'm pretty familiar with the Ultra HD, but let me know if you want to see me do a quick side-by-side -side wear test for you guys. I will be happy to do that. I cheated a little bit. I did put this all over my face already. I took it off, but I, I just wanted to see the finish and the shade matches. And it is quite similar to the Ultra HD, so I'm very, very curious. There are 40 shades in the skin range. Looks great. Makeup Forever always has a great range of shades. This is supposed to instantly blur, have a true to skin finish and tone, 24 hour wear, waterproof and sweat proof, non comedogenic. I was curious if they are going to get rid of this foundation. As of now, it's still full price on the Sephora website. It is still there as well. With the Dior, when they redid their Forever foundations, they completely took the old formulation off. So I'm curious to see what's going to happen with the old one. But let's take a look at the box if you need to take a look at the ingredients. So here is what the box looks like. I have a few different shades that I'm going to toggle between. They didn't send me my perfect shade. My perfect shade shade is R330 of the Ultra HD um, and you'll see they have the original shades in parentheses so I gotta work with what I got here and then here is the back of the foundation now something I want you to know is that alcohol is the third ingredient on the foundation so if that's a red flag for you just know that it's there personally I don't mind a little bit of alcohol in my foundation this is 1.01 .01 fluid ounces a 12 month shelf life and is made in France here is what the packaging looks like. I love the nude cap and you'll see the cap changes based on whatever color that you have. I think it looks so much more luxe than the old packaging. So what am I waiting on? Let's uh, put it on my face. If you are a shade match with me, I tried on 2N22. This is too dark on me. I also have tried on 2Y20. Also a little dark but a bit better. And then they sent me 1N14. I'm gonna mix these two to get my perfect shade. Here's what 2Y20 looks like. Here's the consistency. It isn't too liquidy, really. It's not thick either, but you can see it's right in between there, how it's sitting on my hand. <clears throat> I'm quickly gonna lay down a little bit of Tatcha Liquid Silk Canvas. This is one of my favorite tried and true primers. I'm mixing in a little bit of 1N14 because the shade does not match me very well. <laughs> I'm gonna mix them. So I have two pumps on my hand. Still is a little dark and yellow, as you can see, but that's the best I could do, guys. It maybe is 1N14 my perfect shade? Hold on. Shades they sent me, I feel like, are quite yellow, but I'm gonna take this off because I feel like 1N14 is probably my best match. I don't need to do any mixing. <laughs> One moment. Okay, now that I'm looking at the foundation swatches, 1N14 is right here. This looks like it would be a good shade for me. So, thought the darkest one they gave me would be my best shade. Based on what I saw online, I was wrong. Okay, this is much better. So I'm going to start off by pushing this in with a brush. I really love the way that this applies with a brush. It spreads so easily, you guys. It doesn't leave any streaks. You know how there's some foundations where, yeah, it works good with a brush, but you need to like go in with a sponge after. This is a foundation where I feel like I don't need to do that. The brush spreads the foundation so evenly and easily. I'm putting very minimal effort. This foundation works out perfectly. I'm actually gonna turn the lights down. I need you to see everything that's happening here. So here's what it looks like with just that brush application. Let me finish up over here on this side of my face. Now, if you're new to my channel, my skin type is 
normal to dry, leaning more dry in the winter time, which is now. Um, my skin is pretty well hydrated, I feel like, right now, but I do have a few drier patches on my face that come inconsistently, and I also have very sensitive, acne-prone skin, so we have some discoloration and acne scarring happening. I'm gonna push around my T-zone area with a sponge. I added a second coat here because this is where I carry more of my pores and my redness just to see how this layers. So here's how the first layer is looking. One thing that I'm immediately noticing is how soft my skin looks. This does not have a dewy or glowy finish at all. It's almost like a natural matte. It very much mimics the skin and I feel like as your oils will come through, some more glowiness will also come through. You can also manipulate that with the type of base that you're using. I did not use a glowy base today, but I feel like this is thin enough. If you used a glowy base, that would shine through as well. So it's a consistency that I feel like can be manipulated very easily. The finish does remind me a lot of the OG Ultra HD foundation in that it's definitely not a glowy foundation. And I love that. That's refreshing to me. There's been so many glowy foundations, but everything just looks like a very subtle matte and I really love it. It's not really emphasizing any dryness on my face. They claim that it instantly blurs. Blurring is a strong word, but it definitely softens the face. That's for sure. And this is just one coat. Coverage-wise, I would say it gives on the lighter side of a medium coverage. Definitely not full. You can see my freckles through, but it definitely gives enough to even out the skin tone itself. But if you want full coverage, this is not gonna be your girl. Let me see what a second coat does. I'm gonna go on my cheeks where I have more redness because I do see a bit of redness peeking through. While it does even out the redness, some red areas might peek through. And I don't think I'm getting more coverage with a second coat. So it definitely is gonna stop at that medium kind of coverage. I'm putting it right here on my cheek to see if it covers the freckles a bit better. Maybe a bit better, but you're not gonna get too much additional coverage with the more layers that you put on. Right now, just looking at my skin, I'm seeing it as being a foundation that's going to be good for all skin types. I really, really do. If you do have drier skin, just make sure you prep the skin properly. But I'm gonna put on the rest of my makeup. I'm gonna fast forward so you can see what products I'm putting immediately on top. But I'm really liking the way that it's looking. The only flaw I'm seeing is the coverage does look a little bit uneven on my cheeks where the redness is the most prominent. But other than that, I think it's something that's easily fixable and I just love the finish and the way that it is laying on my skin. It's really refreshing from the glowy finish just because my pores aren't as prominent and I feel comfortable with that if I use a glow warrior base and as my oils come through the skin will come alive if I want it to. So I wanted to pop in to show you how everything looked with makeup on top. I've been wearing the foundation, I want to say, for like an hour now. By the way, my hair is supposed to like be here. I've been wearing the foundation for, I want to say, an hour now. And I think right now, I might have overpowdered. It looks like a little on the dry side, especially around my mouth. It's sitting funny around my mouth for some reason. I'm going to like take foundation off and re-layer it there because... 
I don't know what I did. But, <laughs> but other than that, I think the rest of my face looks great. It is a touch dry. Like I said, I think I might have over powdered, but I'm not worried because as the day goes on, I think my natural oils will come through. But I think of all the glowy foundations, if you are an oily girl who's struggling, this might be a good one for you. But I think it looks really great. I think the more semi-matte finish is a really nice change. It's making my skin look noticeably more perfected than my skin has been looking recently. So I'm excited about this. I'm excited to see how this wears. I think other than whatever's happening above my lip, everything is looking super duper good. So I'm gonna go in front of my window on my iPhone so you can see how everything looks in natural light before I check in in a few hours. But here's how we're looking and I am liking it. I'm not loving it yet. It's not how I'm feeling, but I'm definitely in like right now. Okay, so I took the foundation off of my lip, my upper lip, and I redid it. It was my fault. I layered concealer over top and then powder and then more concealer and it made everything look really disgusting. But I just took it off and then put another layer of foundation on and all is good again. It looks much better and my face looks really, really nice. I am enjoying it so far. So here you can see, let me get a little closer to the window. It's not the sunniest today. But what do you think? It's more matte than all of the foundations that I'm currently used to that I've been testing, so it's a nice change, and I'm enjoying it. So I have good feelings. I think wear time is going to really amp this one up for me. Okay, guys, it's time to check in. It is about 3 o'clock. I am literally in the thick of packing things right now. My room went to a complete disaster since I've last seen you. <laughs> but let's get up close and take a look at how everything is looking. Um, let me get a mirror. Okay, so my oils have definitely come through and I feel like now my pores are coming through and it's not looking the best. If I'm being completely honest, I really did have high hopes for this, but I feel like my skin is looking extra textured now for some reason. It's not bad, but it just looks like it's breaking down faster than what I'm used to for a foundation that looked matte like this. Like, <laughs> It's kept its coverage, but it just looks pretty heavy in some areas, which is not a good sign. It looks good from like a medium distance, but then it doesn't look good from a really close distance, if that makes sense. Like overall, if I take a step back, I'm not in front of a studio light, anything like that. I think my skin looks really, really flawless. It looks very beautiful. But then when we get close, you start to see those imperfections that just, it looks a little textured. So I'm like, I'm not loving this anymore. I like it, but I feel like I have foundations that just wear prettier. So we'll see in a few hours. My under eyes, side note, look really great. That's random. Um... But yeah, I'm gonna keep an eye out, but I mean, I'm doing some intense work right now. I'm getting a little sweaty, but yeah, that's the update. All right, you guys, I look a mess. <gasps> look, 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 look. I actually, like, did something productive all day today. So here is the final thoughts of the foundation. I wanted to love it, at least with this first impressions. I have very, very mixed feelings. Generally speaking, when I step back, honestly, my skin looks great. But when you get up close, I really dislike the way that it's collecting around my nose. You can see the oil collecting here and my texture, my pores look really, really bad and exaggerated here, which I don't have a ton of foundations that collect quite in this way. And this, the oil just, it's not looking good. But if I cut this area out of my face, everything else looks great. So I'm very confused. I'm definitely going to have to continue wearing this. Let me know if you guys want to see a direct comparison with the Ultra HD foundation. But it's a, I really like it, but I definitely don't love it. It's not perfect. I want to try putting a little bit of powder in the center of my face to touch up. Just out of curiosity, if we can get the gunginess out. I'm really sad. If this didn't happen in the center of my face, I would love this so much more, but it looks heavy even when I put the powder over top. Generally speaking, this is not a natural foundation. You can see it's sitting on the skin. It looks good, it looks smoothing, but 
it doesn't look like a thin foundation on the skin. Now, I'm going to continue playing. Maybe I just put too thick of a layer on. But first impressions, it's good. It's pretty. But so many foundations have come out. I much prefer the Dior Forever. But I'm going to continue wearing it because I feel like this foundation has a lot of potential. If I just get the correct mix of products, maybe this was a one-off time. But nonetheless, this was still a foundation that I was really, really excited about. I'm not disappointed by it. I'm being very, very picky because I'm a makeup reviewer. That's what I do. Because generally speaking, my face looks really smooth, really beautiful. It's just right here what we got going on in the center. So let me know what you think. Do you think the foundation looks good? Are you going to pass? Are you going to continue to watch reviews? I also did go out to eat dinner and I wore a mask. And it's kind of coming off of my chin where I wore the mask. But... My nose did not get disrupted by the mask at all. And it did wipe off a little bit on the mask, but literally I haven't found a foundation that doesn't do that. So all in all, it didn't get too disrupted by the mask, which I'm happy about. So that's all I have for today's video. I would certainly keep you updated on this foundation. Again, a huge thank you to Makeup Forever for sending this my way. And I will see you guys in the next one. And by the way, after this video, officially, uploads are going to start getting a little bit inconsistent. I did pre-film for my move. I got a lot of stuff to do, so I don't even know if I can edit those videos. <laughs> so I'll see you guys and when I see you next. Bye.